So we see that after all the troubles, heartaches, and patience of God, God finally just said, that's it. They're not going to repent. They're not going to do right. Because they're not going to do right. They're not going to repent. Forget it. tired of them. and so we're going to start over. Now the only one that found grace was a man by the name of Noah. Genesis 6, 8. We'll start there. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a different man than most men. He didn't go to the honky-tonks. He didn't hang out at the bars. He didn't hang out at the jeep joints and uh, all the other places that men would go to uh, looking for a good time. Noah stayed home. Uh, he stayed home with his children. He had three children. And thank God, uh, thank God for grace that Noah found him. You say, what's grace? That's something you don't deserve. What's mercy? That's something keeping you from something you do deserve. Like hell. You deserve hell. <clears throat> if you stole one cookie, said one curse for it, you deserve hell. There is sin when you were born. Now, you're innocent. While you're innocent, you get to go to heaven. Now, there is a stage in the process. I don't know what age, you know. I've heard theologians say 8, 12, 6. Nobody really knows. I mean, anybody that will tell you that they know when innocence ends is uh, wrong. Uh, nobody knows. Nobody. Uh, I know men that are uh, in their 50s, 60s, uh, did not have all their brain power. I would consider them innocent. They just were really tenders, you know what I mean? I mean, you know. Can you close that for me, Susie? So, grace is giving you heaven. Mercy is keeping you from hell. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And the generations of Noah, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. Notice it says his generation. And Noah walked with God. Noah was a perfect man. In his generation, according to God. Not his wife, not his children, not his neighbors. Because if you talk to your wife or your neighbors or your maid or anybody else, they'll say they're not perfect. He is certainly not a perfect man. You know, he doesn't do 100%, you know, this or that or whatever. No, no. But in God's eyes... He was trying to do right. And so God said, he's a perfect man during his generation. Mm -hmm. During his time, he was doing better than uh, those that uh, didn't want to follow after God, didn't want to go to church, uh, didn't want to do uh, things right. It doesn't say, no, it didn't have a temper. He might have had a big temper. You don't know. We don't know if he was a kind man, a happy man. I, all I can tell you is, you know, uh, I heard a saying, and, and the saying was, you know, when they asked him, when they asked me about my daddy, he said, "What are you going to tell him?" He was my father. He was a good man, and there was a bad man in him. He just good. He just he was my father. 
That's all you can say. You know, uh, there that's the way it is. And But God found something very, very special in Noah. And there's going to be people in heaven, God, that you're going to try to reason with God. Well, you know, I just do not understand, you know, why they're here. And then you're going to see other people that you thought were going to go to heaven. And you're going to say, well, why ain't they there? Well, that's because they never got born again, never got blood washed, never asked Christ to come in their heart, change their lives. They really didn't mean business. They said a little prayer, maybe when they were young. Did you get saved? Yes, I got saved. Did God come in your heart? Yes, God came in my heart. Uh, everything different, everything's different now, but uh, in reality, nothing changed. They said the right words, they, they might have even believed it, but uh, nothing happened because uh, through, through the heart, through the mouth, through the soul, they really did not believe that God had come in and moved in and had forgiven them of all of their sins. Mm -hmm. Very religious people. Uh, you'll find the most miserable people in church are the hypocrites. Those that claim to be saved but are not. And uh, they live a very miserable life. Uh, I mean, try and pretending to be a Christian and you're not a Christian. And uh, you're going to have people in heaven they are going to say, well, you know, uh, the reason I, I didn't make it to heaven is because, you know, I lived in a bad neighborhood. Um, it's uh, my, my upbringing, uh, my parents' upbringing, you know, uh, they weren't exactly the best people. They were crackheads or, or uh, drunks or whatever. Uh, they constantly fight. I was abused as a child. La, 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 you know, give God every excuse that you want, uh, but that's not, uh, that's not going to make it with God. God only cares about one thing, whether you get the blood or whether you don't. Noah was a man with men all around him doing evil all the time. And Noah, he did right. And you can use any excuse if you want to sin. Well, you know, if you had the mate that I had, you'd sin just like I'd sin. If you had the job I had, uh, you'd sin like I sin. If you had the, the, uh, the children I had, the preaching, the past, the environment, well, I mean, you can use any excuse if you want to sin. Now, there's some pretty good excuses, let me tell you. I mean, there's a good, I've heard all kinds of good excuses for people that want to sin. You all sin bad enough. I mean, there's good excuses, real good excuses. Uh, I mean, pretty, 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 pretty good excuses, uh, amen. Uh, but you have to make up your mind, am I going to sin or am I going to walk with God? And you have to do that every day. Uh, there's good days, uh, you win, and then, then there's going to be a couple of bad days, you ain't going to win. I hate to pop your little bubble, but you ain't, you know, you haven't made it to heaven. You're not a 100% classified saint yet. You're still a human being. Until we put you in the grave, you're still a human being. And you have to decide, am I going to sin today? Or am I going to serve God? One of the two. So, Noah got three boys, Shem, Ham, Japheth, verse 10. Earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. A lot of killing going on, a lot of, you know, uh, fights going on. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. I mean, it was one big giant... Uh, people killing, murdering each other, 
this guy's got a little money. Let's kill him. Let's rob him. Uh, you know, uh, this guy's got a pretty good looking wife. Let's steal her. Let's take her. Let's do whatever we want. Whatever we think, any uh, evil imagination uh, that you can think of as the worst crimes of today's society were being done back in those days. Child abuse, all kinds of things of that nature. And uh, you'll find out uh, it was pretty corrupt now, and it's pretty corrupt now. Uh, according to Herbert Lockyer, he wrote several books. Uh, Lockyer, uh, he wrote all the books like all the men's names of the Bible, all the women's names of the Bible, all the numbers of the Bible, uh, the history, uh, all the layouts. It's predominantly for pastors that want to try to make uh, boring uh, information a little bit more exciting. So that's what I try to do. So I have his set of books and uh, uh, he got one call, like I said, all the men. He said Shem meant uh, a son of Noah or an ancestor of Christ. Meaning renown. From his name, he, uh, he is to be inferred that Shem was a, a distinguished person. The greatness of Shem arose that he was a forerunner of Christ. 